baobab seeds taken with the throwing stick. And this is going to be breakfast. tree here in uh, Lake Iasi in Tanzania. Uh, this tree has multiple uses. One of them is a friction fireboard right here. Of the dry, of the dry and dead branches on this tree. Another really cool use for this, uh, this tree is that it's actually used to treat or should I say ward off mosquitoes. You can see that there's a sap that oozes out. Well, so this stuff here you can rub anywhere on your body and you can see the sheen that it leaves. It's a great insect repellent and it also will uh, treat cuts. So you can rub it straight onto cuts. The camophora tree. Flip it. The Hadza today gave us some of the dick dick that they had hunted last night. We just trapped a, um, a bird, a Franklin, so now it's our turn to give back to them. Hey! 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 Being in the outdoors, it's very important to keep your teeth clean. So here in Africa, we have the toothbrush bush. And, uh, and if, any, if you've ever seen the Maasai people's teeth, I think it's, uh, it's quite obvious that their teeth are very white and, and seem to be in very good condition. So whether that's uh, due to the fact that they use the toothbrush bush or not, well, that's debatable, but I think it uh, work, works wonders. I definitely feel the, the difference in my teeth afterwards. You just trim off the outer bark. Just trim that off. And then what you do is you just bite, you bite on it and you want to mash up the fibers. See how all these little fibers are like the bristles of a brush. And then you can brush each tooth at a time. That's amazing. Afterwards, how clean your teeth feel. We 
here with the Hadza trying to uh, make ourselves a traditional bow, like theirs, as you can see over here. You want to make? You got to make a bow. What do you dig little bomb and then I'm a dog bar for my name is Mumpy Pop for so you and the I say a book of that quick up. Get a sudden. I so good. I so good. I Hey, the chief's just hey. arrived with the dick dick. Beautiful dick dick that they got last night. Breakfast in the bush with the Hadza. We're skinning it and uh, we're going to obviously eat the meat, but we're also going to be able to use the raw hide to, to make uh, bow strings for our, for our bows that we started making yesterday. The objective is to get it as tight as possible because as this dries it will naturally want to fold over and shrink and that's what we want to prevent. Okay now we're fleshing this so we the chief is removing the sort of uh, the, the fleshy layer, the sort of, what, I don't know if you'd call it the inner dermis layer. Um, and all we want is the outermost skin layer. You can see the white. That's what we want. Um, all of this stuff here, the red stuff that you're looking at, is going to rot and smell. And it's going to make the hide more stiff. So if we can remove all of this, the inner flesh, and, uh, and clean it up as much as possible, we'll have a better skin.
every time with these things. Honey, we have two Hadza guys that are extracting honey from the hive. You can see that they're smoking the bees from the bottom, and uh, you can see the smoke coming out of the top. And uh, they're chopping into the top of the baobab above the hive because it's access from the bottom. And once they tap into it, they'll extract the honey. We're in the top of a baobab tree, and the baobab is very common to to have the African killer bees. So the bees are getting angry. Smoke, but once we expose the hive, they're going to get really angry. So um, they're used to being stung. Just pass them a pot. So the benefit of eating wild honey is that not only do you get the honey itself, but you actually get the pollen, and the pollen brings in the whole protein content. So it balances it out. And then uh, apparently there's a lot of nutrition in the larva themselves. So you can eat the bee larva themselves and actually taste sweet too. Tastes great. So you're getting so many nutrients out of eating honey in its raw state. Harvesting some berries, chukwaete. You roll them in your hands, remove the outer hard skin, and then uh, give this the fleshy. Uh, pulp on the inside and you just put those in your mouth chew that all off and then there's a hard pit and that pit you just spit out very sweet very tasty probably full of nutrients One more rock. Thank you. All right. <laughs> oh, oh good my that God. Time. So checking the deadfall trap this morning, going for hyrax was what we set them up for, which is a, like a, a rock rodent that lives here in uh, the African savanna. And uh, unfortunately we didn't get one of those, but we did get the old mouse. <laughs> so uh, uh, some meat's better than none. We'll go and cook them up. At least with the small animals, get to cook. Then quicker. So, just found a fresh porcupine hole over here, and uh, the chief chief is going to take a look. And he's getting right in there. No way, look at that. I mean, this is what we you look at, talk about persistence. I mean, this guy's crawled right inside. Good 
story for you. Some honey from the stingless bees. Thank you. You can see it's kind of intact. Beautiful. Mm, Very dripping. sweet. It's evening time. Coming back to check the deadfalls again. We've got a mouse this morning. And uh, as you can see, we've got a, a big old rat this evening. Rat's not the ideal protein source out here for us, but beggars can't be choosers right now. I'm uh, really hungry, and a rat sounds pretty damn good. Took the rat off. Mm. Throw it on the fire. <laughs> Let her cook. John, do I cook? Delicious. Uh, you go. So it's day nine out here with the Hadza. As you can see, energy levels are pretty high. We're very excited. It's uh, it's my final hunt with the Hadza, and we are going specifically for baboons. This is the prized animal for the Hadza. They love the meat. It's uh, their most sacred animal and the one that they cherish hunting the most. Right here. Hacking into it. So this is the finished product of the arrow poison after boiling down the um, the liquid that was removed from the, the plant. He's working the poison, about to apply it on my arrowhead. Heating it up to make it softer. Mm. Over here, you can see is how they've molded it onto the arrowhead. And so after piercing the animal, this enters the bloodstream and will poison the animal and eventually killing it. Well, today is another long one and the final hunt, man, I just, this is, it blows my mind. These Hadza, the endurance, you know, the, what they have to go through to put food, food in their mouths is just so humbling. Um, their hunting techniques are considerably taxing um, physically. Take a look at this. Here's a six-year-old boy. He's just hiked over 10 miles, over hours. He's wearing no shoes and he can keep going as if no problem. And not only that, he's going to stay up all night hunting baboons tonight. So, <laughs> so for all of you six-year-olds back home playing TV games, uh, this will give you something to think about. These are the scouts. The scout baboons will stand on the highest points and look out for any intruders. So right now we are not wanting to alert them and that's why we're not hunting them now and waiting for nightfall. Another sapphire sky, sunset, intent. We are uh, sitting around the campfire. It's probably maybe middle of the night, who knows and we have bedded down, rested for a little while and uh, we are now preparing for the hunt. So the baboon are bedded up on uh, the first rock that we scouted and um, the plan of attack is we will go up in two separated groups and uh, from, from two different entrance points onto this rock, therefore cornering the baboons. So once they're cornered and once we get up there the lights come on and um, we start taking shots with arrows and um, hopefully hit as many as possible. If any are kill shots, great. If not, they're all poison arrows. So we will um, come back, bed down in this, in this uh, camp spot for the, for the night and then track the baboons tomorrow in the daylight. But um, 
this is uh, quite the operation. It's uh, we've got almost uh, not quite two, four, six, eight, almost about about a dozen of us, and we have got obviously very high-powered bows. Don't be fooled by the fact that these are stick bows that these guys make with their hands and a knife. These bows are probably, if I had to guess, about 80 pounds draw. They're getting a poison arrow at that poundage in your skin will not be fun. So it's uh, the only concern I think I've had this whole trip, which is legitimate, is getting uh, some crossfire and getting in the way of one of their arrows. So we're just going to have to keep an eye out for that. But um, we just we're just hunkering down for a little longer. The chief uh, is not happy with the fact that the wind is not blowing strong enough. He wants the wind to blow because otherwise the baboons will hear us approaching. It's imperative that we be very quiet on the, on the walk up there. If they are alerted to us coming up there, they will scatter. And if they scatter, then it, the whole plan kind of, you know, fails. We need to keep them in a group and we need to corner them. So yeah, aggressive baboons, um, poison tipped arrows, and no headlamps allowed so walking through uh, you know thorn brush acacia um, it's there's a lot to think about but it's very exciting Baboon hunt update. We surrounded the boon, baboons, we got up onto the rock and um, we separated in two different uh, groups. The one group managed to get two arrows into two, two baboons and so um, at least something was hunted. Um, we've just got to go and track them down today as they, they ran off, they weren't kill shots, they ran off and um, so we'll go and track, track them down, follow their blood trail today. Damn, I've never seen it done that way. <laughs> well, I think so. Yummy. Is it a I could be. Thank you.